Hi, it's the anonymous girlfriend producer. Again. Welcome back to the Larry Clayman Whore Tour. Again. 86 page document. God damn paperwork on this show. Anyways, buckle up. Your second ride is about to begin. Started off. I had a barber like you, Larry. His name was Vin- Vinny Vinny. I swear to God, he actually accidentally cut somebody's ear off because he got distracted. The Van Gogh cut. He used to he used to always say to me when I came moved out of LA, I didn't have anything really. So he used to say, anytime you want, come to my shop, get a haircut. And he would make me get up in between paying customers. So it took about six <laughs> hours to get a haircut. But then he would be like cursing the whole time. And then I'd, and then I would say like, I would curse and he goes, not in my shop. Let's welcome everybody to LK for everyone. That's Larry Clayman for everyone. LK the number four, every the number one on Twitter. Like us, follow us, love us. Uh, go And obviously thank you to our host site, amgreatness.com. We're here tonight with our truthful ombudsman and our propsman tonight. And our eulogist. And our yes. eulogist. As opposed to our urologist. Our, Correct. Our, <laughs> Louis, you, Lewis, fine. You really, Larry, like, were like, you're like from the 60s. You were, you're over the 50s, like from the Borscht Belt days. I mean, there is nobody I've met that is more Borscht Belt than you. Really? Yeah. It, One it, of those resorts that I has since been said, incinerated. That's, that's I exactly. I said our proctologist. That, but this is exactly my point. That's it. But, and then, you, you you know, in the he's background, the, bump. He's the Buddy Hackett of red buttons. <laughs> Larry yeah, Clayton you know, of law in, of comedy. When I was Duke, you, Buddy Hackett you, you, used to come on the rice diet, and they came into one of my classes. I was taking a course on... The Old Testament of Duke, a Methodist school, believe it or not, because yeah. I had to learn my identity because I didn't learn it in Hebrew school because yeah. I cut class. Yeah. And he came in and, and they asked him why he was there. And he said, well, I'm, I'm here to meet all the shikses. And if uh, people don't know, that's a term for a non-Jewish girl. And thank you for uh, opening the show, Larry. Larry Clayman, uh, freedomwatchusa.org. And uh, you know what scares me, Lewis? More than anything is that the people we're talking to, or some a lot of people, don't know who Buddy Hackett is. Right. Don't know. Don't know what the Catskills are. Don't mm-hmm. know about the Borscht Belt. Well, watch that movie, the the marvelous. It's, 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 it's not the t- yeah, movie. It's a TV it's, series. It's, it's, yeah. it's a TV. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a great TV series. As a matter of fact, it, uh, learn it's, about it. It's our pro- it's our producer who remains as un- has to remain anonymous. It's one of her favorite shows. Oh, really? And one of my favorite actors, Tony Shalhoub, is in it. But nobody cares about that. Who does An he Arab play? who plays Jews. Is he playing Jews? Lenny Bruce? Yeah. Is that the guy who plays Lenny no. Bruce? No. No, he's the father. Yeah. Oh, the father. And okay. Lebanese. He's actually Lebanese. Right. Massive uh, Green Bay uh, Packer fan. And he did one of the... I just want to say he did... Tony Shalhoub did one of the nicest things. Uh, years ago, a friend of mine plays in this, like... I want to say a celebrity poker game. But they don't play Hold'em. They play... Um, Two four like penny, you know, and most you could lose is two hundred bucks. And I and he, I would always get invited. I was the only non actor that was because they all thought I spoke Yiddish, you know. So like George Siegel would go there and all these different and, California. And, and, you ever see California and, Split with George Siegel? Yes, my Great grandmother film. Yetta would go and, there. And, and Eddie Ed, Ed, Ed Asner was there, yeah. and they would all and and I used to say to my friend. There's only one guy I want to meet. I want because I love Monk. I want to meet Tony Shalhoub. I just want to meet Tony Shalhoub. And I'm in New York. My friend calls me up, and he, he goes, he met Tony and he Schmiel. goes, he goes, you're never gonna guess who's here. And I go, and I go, you, jo-, you know, I, I used a different word. And he goes, Tony, Sh-, you know. And so he, 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 I ask him if he could, uh, auto- if he could send an autograph to New Jersey for my nephew, who was the biggest Monk fan, wants to be an actor. And Tony Shalhoub's like, of course. And he asked the name. And um, you know, two or three days later, gets this huge poster size, you know, Monk picture in his house tony shalhoub signed it and you know i just thought you know we all look at sometimes we look at hollywood as these you know i've never at, i've never been to hollywood. Yeah, i know it's you've like, never been to hollywood yeah. because you live in uh north north uh dakota right now right uh you're going to the badlands next yes. week and um well anyway uh a little bit off point a little okay. bit you know what some you know sometimes those yeah. are my those are my nice Instead, memory- you met ben stein yeah, and I, well, yes, I met Ben Stein, and who became my rabbi, and um, my ra- my he's, he's my ambassador he's of my Quan, friend my ra- and, and your colleague, my yeah. my rabbi of Quan. Yeah. But I want to talk about we 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 had, we had done another show. It was an edited version of Larry Clayman, you know your 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 best selling book, whores, and 
Lewis and I decided we wanted to, you know, get a double decker coffee shop. You know, we wanted the, uh, we want merchandise. We, but we would really do, and, and the we the horror tour, uh, the horror tour, and this is, and we did an yeah. edited version of the horror tour where you were a little held back of places in Washington D.C. of touring, of you, you, you know, Lewis and I really wanted like not just where Vince Foster died. We wanted the street. We wanted the address. We wanted what the grass looked like, where the gun was yeah, lying. We don't, we don't want yeah. Ford's Theater. We yeah, want, yeah. you see that coffee you, shop? Yeah. That's where the whores are. In, yeah, yeah, in the back. Yeah, yeah. and you, na- I, I want to know the... We, uh, we touched the surface. We touched the surface, and yeah. I, you know, and... and no and, pun and, intended. And, 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 tonight, and tonight's episode is the whore tour to unedited, and I, you know, I got to say, I, I think it was my girlfriend that pointed out it would be really funny if we did it on a, not a double-decker bus exactly, but like, you know, the ice cream truck. Yes, a good humor. <laughs> well, a good humor it's truck. a fallback position. Yeah. If all else fails, we'll get a bus and we'll take people around Washington, D.C. Yeah. And we'll show them where the whores live. Well, and we're working on our presentation because when we go before the investors, we've got to be good. Yeah, we got to be good. We got to get this tour yeah. down. You did the local tour, but we got to realize since you've sued almost everybody in Washington, D.C., that it's. It, but the cases weren't always directly related to Washington, D.C. Right. right, so you well, su- they always had a, a nexus, as lawyers said, right. to Washington D.C. So let's talk whore. Well, you know, we have a glo- this is why well, we have a globe. Was, there was one story I was going to tell as we were closing yeah. the prior episode, and this was the height of, I would say, the China Gate scandal. Now, what was the China Gate scandal? We will use the Socratic method here. That was Clinton. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the that paper was, chase. That was Bill and Hill taking millions of dollars from the communist Chinese to line their coffers so they could get reelected in uh, 1996. Right. Okay. And we uncovered that at Judicial Watch. I uncovered that. And our, my nemesis, who would not investigate this, obviously she wouldn't, was Janet Reno, who was the Attorney General under Bill Clinton. Hors de jour. Hors de jour. So one night I went to this... Let's just hold on one second. Lewis, where's Washington? You brought a prop. Right. So here know. we are. This is Larry. We're going to try to stay. We're starting here. This is Washington, D.C. This is the United States. Okay, put, right. the, put, put the globe a little closer to your camera so people could see, but it's not exactly blocking your beautiful face. This is Washington, D.C. We've got New York. We have, this is the United States. Okay, and we, we have the China Gate scandal. We have you suing Janet Reno. Well, that was part of it. Um, so right here we have oh, China. Yeah. That's the I actually. I did not sue her at that time. I sued her for something else. At this time, I was serving a subpoena on her because she had information. She had the diary of John Wong that the Justice Department had taken off the market, so to speak. And John Wong was suspected to be a Chinese spy, someone who was with the Riotti family, so, okay, the Lippo get, Bank. Remember, we're being descript. I'm getting the point. But where was John Wong? John Wong was in Los Angeles. Okay, so... Okay? Hold on. Right, we started in DC. Yeah, he, he, lived, he lived in Glendale at the time. Okay, he lived in Glendale. Yeah, and not so, Armenian. So he was a greaser right. for the Clintons. He was helping raise the money from communist China. I'm simplifying it right now. Okay. And there was a diary that he had, and we were looking for that because this was potentially the biggest scandal in American history. Where maybe did you, where did you go even looking bigger for it? than Teapot Dome? Where did you go looking for it? I went looking for her diary in the Justice Department. Okay, so you in had Washington DC. In, 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 yes, because she yeah. had it. So you had so you had, who went looking for so it? So I had a federal judge issue a okay. subpoena, Judge Royce Lambert, and I had one of the people that worked for me, a law student at George Mason University, take it over and serve it. Now, Jan Arena wasn't real happy about that, obviously, because they didn't want it out. I mean, this was something that could have brought down the Clinton administration. The Obama I mean not the Obama, but the Monica Lewinsky scandal was minor compared to this. Right. In fact, it was the sex of the Monica Lewinsky scandal that ultimately drew people away from the bigger scandal. So anyway, I go to a, a Latin restaurant Where? close to the FBI okay. in Washington, D.C. I put this gone. Yeah. We're still in D.C. With Blanquita Cullum, a conservative talk show host, and the former mayor of Kensington, Maryland, uh, Plank. I forget her first name. Okay. And we walk in there. Betsy. Jane Plank. Okay. okay Jane Plank. Walking the Plank. So we're sitting there, and in walks Janet Reno, the attorney general, in a denim dress with two young girls in denim dresses. They're all dressed the same. Hmm. 
Very bizarre. Very bizarre. Yeah, and look, I'm not going to disparage Janet Reno. She's dead. There are worse people than her. <laughs> there are worse people than her that have been in Washington, D.C., but J- Janet Reno liked young girls. Okay, that's just a fact. Okay. Lewis? No, 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 he's, I, <laughs> so far, for, I, and, I, and I mean this, I congratulate you because you've made this very linear. You've Wasn't simplified I it. Wasn't discreet about it? Yes, mm-hmm. and you've substantiated everything you've said. So I was, so wait, please keep I was going. waiting on a eulogy, sorry. No, 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 no. I was just. Go on. Yeah. I want to get to in. the point where you reveal so, the Dick York Dick and I'm Sergeant dispar- look, conspiracy. Everybody knew that Janet Reno was gay. Nobody, <clears throat> okay. nobody, there was no pretense there. Blind man in the dark She used to live in the Everglades in Miami by herself. Okay, let's stay in D.C. <laughs> stay in D.C. Okay, all right. So we've got to pretend they're investors. Yeah. So you know she sits down and and, and uh, with her two girlfriends, yeah. all dressed the same. And I said to Blanquita and Jane, I said, I'm going to go over and say hello. I never met her, but she knew who I was because at that point I was coming to prominence. I was prominent at that point, and I had helped uncover this China Gate scandal, which people thought could bring that administration down. And she was resisting me, and I just served her with a subpoena. So I went over to her and I said, Miss Reno. Uh, no general. No. I was very polite. And yeah. Blanquita was behind me. I said, uh, I want to introduce nice. myself. You may know who I am. And of course, I knew she knew who I was. I just served her with a subpoena. She grabs my hands and says, Oh, Larry, it's really nice to meet you. You're doing a great job. <laughs> right? And, but she's very polite and very nice. She I mean, didn't have I, security I, with her? She had the two girls. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So at that point, uh, you know, I said, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Nice to meet you, Miss Reno. And sitting up there in the balcony was uh, Fred Thompson, who was no, running, the, Thompson. He was running no. the Watergate He's also dead. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he was dating Kellyanne Fitzpatrick, who's now Kellyanne Conway now. Mm. So he was up there, and I said, "Wonderful I actor, said, by I said, the I way." I said, "Why are you here?" Time for an October. And he says, "I'm waiting no for Kellyanne out. to come." Die hard too. Sorry, go I'm ahead. waiting for Kellyanne to come, and we started to talk shop because he was investigating China Gate on the Hill. He later took a dive. Many people thought that he was going to run for president and had a good chance because he had a nice. He did run for president. He did run for president. 2008. Yeah, but he was came very, into the race a little he too late. He was a very nice man. Okay, yeah. Fred Thompson. God rest his soul. He looked like a wonderful Minor actor. Minor digression. A friend of mine. Who is a friend of your rabbi? Was his speechwriter, hmm. and out of respect for yeah. my friend and his career, I will never mention his name on this show that we broadcast from a um, bunker, a, or no, or a, or a, uh, a crab, hmm. a crab crawler. What do they call? Yeah, a fish, a fish trawler. But yeah. Fred, whatever you want to call him, Fred, Fred was in the balcony. He's a, the late, he was waiting the late for Kelly Senator Ann. Thompson. He was waiting for Kelly Ann. I mean, he was conducting these hearings. He was doing this a terrible really job, actually. He was doing a terrible job. I think he was drunk most of the time when the hearings opened. Fred Dalton Thompson. Yeah, he was he, he was a partier. I mean, he, yeah. he loved women. He went out. Yeah, and Larry people. did yeah. a field sobriety test before the <laughs> hearings. Know. But uh, so anyway, at the end of the night, I, you know, I talked to shop about the China Gate scandal, what he was doing. I you know, said, I'm happy to cooperate with you. Send your investigators over to Judicial Watch. I'll give you access to a lot of documents. Uh, living next to me was his chief investigator. Um, who was a little bit afraid of me. They didn't want to get too close because I was much more aggressive than they were. You? Aggressive? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so at the end of the night, Janet Reno gets up and leaves with her two girlfriends. She comes over to me and says, Larry, it's very nice to meet you. I want to wish you a really nice weekend. You know, And, and I'll tell you something. From a human standpoint, she was a very nice person. and um, But she was a cover-up artist. And who was her deputy attorney general? It was Eric Holder, and he was a cover-up artist, too. And it was a very interesting period of time. You can read about it in my book. I met Nolanda Hill, who was well, Ron Brown's girlfriend, one of them. you got to remember, after this tour, we're yeah. not going to really need the book because— We're going to need a vacation. <laughs> but the book is—the yeah. tour is— The whore tour. It's the whore tour. It is yeah, well, stories— Well, Janet Reno, although she was a very nice person, she was a whore because she took a dive— and she about, well, we know she took a dog. What about Ruby Ridge? She had those two girls. What about Ruby Ridge? That's right. That was a problem, too. Yeah. I, yeah. I think I, that, <laughs> that was a problem, <laughs> too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, it, but that's it's, it's like Larry. Like, this is again, about, this is another fact. Also, con. what about <laughs> Alien Gonzalez? No, I know. Yeah. I understand. But it's 35 mm-hmm. minutes on mm-hmm. um, Tylenol versus ibuprofen. Yeah. And then 
the Holocaust well, was what bad. What was the other? There was Ruby Ridge, and then there was another. And there was event another like that. But, 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 Waco. 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 Right. Was yeah, it she Waco was in on both Ridge. of them. Waco and, Ruby, and Ruby, Ruby Ridge. Ridge. Right. Two. Two. Horrific. There was this other thing. Is, Waco. That, right. Well, so, she was totally right. incompetent. But, but, but that's my point. Among I mean, other things. But I'm happy she was very nice to you. And she was too uh, aggressive because she she didn't have to provoke those people. How come and, you didn't get involved in those things, or was that pre? That was, that was pre uh, what I was doing. That was, yeah. that was pre LK. You for ever everyone. been to Oklahoma it City? Was pre, it was pre oh, Judicial yeah. Watch. Oh. It was pre oh. Judicial Watch, but it factored into it because it showed her personality. And, you know, and one thing about the Democrats was it? Yeah, wasn't she Oklahoma City too? Well, she was the Attorney General. She was the Attorney happened. General during Oklahoma City. Yeah, I think which, you're right. Which, 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 in your book, right? I mean, in Whores, do you talk about you you representing the people? I represented uh, families of the victims of Oklahoma City. For a time, we sued Saddam Hussein, Iraq. Oh, I love you, uh, man. We sued everybody. Yeah, but you know, Janet Reno. This is the thing about the Democrats. Okay, number one, they dress better than the Republicans. Okay, they're a little snazzier. Okay, number two, they generally have better personalities in terms of being endearing than the Republicans because they're they're like the devil essentially. I mean, they kind of con you. They're great con artists. Whereas the Republicans, they all look the same. They use the same hair dye. They wear the same suits. Yeah, something about Lou Dobbs right now and Cal Thomas. Yeah. In fact, when I ran for the Senate, and that, that guy, was, that um, the one who was a big failure, Ronald Reagan. Yeah. <laughs> when when I was running for the Senate, uh, it was actually getting back to Roger Stone. Mm. He was my campaign chairman for a couple of weeks before we went our separate ways. He wanted me to dye my hair a little bit to look a little bit younger. So let's leave. Okay, so we've left. January. Anyway, I we refused left- to dye it the same color. As Tom DeLay and the other Republicans. So we've, we've, so left, we, we've left the Janet Reno bar, okay? Where's yeah. the next stop on this tour? It doesn't have to be, right? You know, it's the Nexus is Washington. Well, Louis Free, FBI director. Yes. Okay. The outside the FBI building. Yeah, well, he was the FBI director. Definitely not the IRS. He put on the, right, char- he put on the charade that he wanted China to get investigated. He really didn't, but... He was positioning himself. He was a Republican appointee before Clinton. How do you he know was a judge? Can I ask you questions? Like, like when you, you know, you're talking. First, uh, stop. Yeah. You don't need proof. Now go on. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> he was a total whore. Yeah. Number one, he was a friend of Hanson. You know, the, the famous spy. Yes. Out there in Great Falls, where I lived for a while. I made a movie about him. Living in Great Falls, which is a very beautiful part of Virginia, Northern Virginia, was yours truly, uh, Louis Free, uh, Justice Antonin Scalia. And uh, my wife at the time was Catholic. We all went to the same church, St. Catherine's. Sometimes I, I didn't. I went sporadically. Okay, but the reality is, is that Louis Free was was a terrible person, and I was getting threatened all the time. And I got this email one time says, "We're going to kill you, and we're going to kill your entire family." And so I sent it over to the FBI to Louis Free. He knew who I was because I had sued him. And he's like, Larry, this is the thousandth letter you've brought no, you me this week. You know, but he, back, but, his assistant came back to me because I had a lawsuit against him for Notre Trulock, who uncovered the uh, theft of nuclear secrets by Wen Ho Lee at Los Alamos Nuclear Laboratory. So his assistant, well, we've really jumped the globe. Now his assistant says to me, if Louis Free uh, helps you out, what's in it for him? That's what he said. And, uh, you couldn't this, knock on his door. You, you said know, you guys were yeah, in guys the same were neighbors. neighborhood. You, you, you saw him at you church. You couldn't come over with like, I can't believe it's that butter. I actually never saw him at church. I knew he went there. But how come you didn't like? Honestly, that's it. Louis actually. I'm not a Catholic. Okay, but I'm, no, I'm, but a, you, I'm but you, a Jewish but, evangelical. But you knew where he lived. Okay, so let's get let, let's, let's. So we got John Arena. We got Louis Free. We got you, Louis asked a good mm-hmm. question about Oklahoma City. You actually, what is how, how you have a you do have a connection to Oklahoma City. Yeah. Well, I, don't, I wouldn't call that whoredom, okay, in Oklahoma City, but I did represent uh, the families. Well, no, it is and whoredom when you think about because I'm not always— Who's responsible for Oklahoma City? That's that, I agree. That's a good question. I think it was a combination of neo-Nazis and uh, people that believe in the sovereign movement and Saddam Hussein. <laughs> <laughs> now, I believe— You had me with the neo-Nazis, okay— no, seriously. No, no, seriously. But and Terry then Terry Nichols the, the, is. How do you get neo Nazi Saddam Hussein? Terry Nichols is. Te- Terry Nichols this is a hell of a tour. His ex-wife in the Philippines gave a deposition on her deathbed that said that she so knew he's that on the deathbed. She this knew, is what I love about you. No, there actually was a transcript. I know, I know. Go on. That uh, that Saddam Hussein was behind 
uh, Oklahoma City in some part. They collaborate. Look look at the Kennedy murder. CIA collaborating most likely. Okay, but remember, they're investors here. We're in Oklahoma mafia. City. We got we to gotta tighten it up. The we, enemy of my enemy is my friend. We got to tighten it up. The, the enemy we, of my enemy is my friend. Larry, we got to tighten it up. And I, 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 the, the best part of a conspiracy or, or, or a movie. You asked me or, what I thought. No, but okay, the, but the best I didn't part. I say it actually okay, happened. So, but for the tour. When somebody says to you, Lewis, right, let's script it out a little bit. When somebody says to you, who do you believe is responsible would for Would you Oklahoma? believe? W- w- is, right. Would you believe it was Saddam Hussein would you believe? A- and the neo-Nazis? Okay, Larry, I find that hard to believe. Now, what about... What why, about? Why not? You can recruit people. But what about the security cam footage of Tim McVeigh in the Ryder truck? What about that? What about it? Okay, go on. So what? He got some fertilizer and and uh, created a giant, giant. Bomb. Right, but okay, but you do you so you do concede that McVeigh played a oh, role. Oh yeah, no, okay. no, okay. no. I'm saying that. that no, he never Mc, says McVeigh. That McVeigh, didn't. McVeigh, okay, was, you know, some people believe McVeigh and Nichols were working with neo Nazis and working because with I don't believe McVeigh to the Saddam extent that I've read about Hussein. him is a neo, was a neo Nazi. I believe he he was. Uh, I don't believe he was a racist. I, I don't believe he was with, a, a neo Nazi. Hmm. I can't speak for Terry Nichols, and I haven't read a lot about this case, except to say, as a bit of trivia, one of his correspondents, his pen pals, uh, Tim McVeigh, was Gore Wait, Vidal. You remember, you remember what happened at the end? He was it, executed. No, no, yeah, but Very what quickly. happened before that, it was discovered, much like with Clive and Bundy. I don't equate Clive and Bundy to Timothy McVeigh, obviously. Okay, Clive no, that's a fair. good man, and so is the family. But it was discovered that a lot of Brady material, exculpatory evidence, was not produced by the government in McVeigh's trial. Which was why there was a stay of execution. And he asked for a new trial. And the government and the corrupt judge out there rushed to have McVeigh executed. It was no, the judge is dead that, also, Richard but how, Mage. But how quickly did that happen? How quickly did yeah, well, McVeigh... He, he, was, he, he, was, he was executed when George W. Bush, early in the, in the Bush administration... So eight, eight years... Yeah, well, yeah. But, but he also, and but what he about also, Nick, did, and what about he didn't, Nichols? Nichols got a life sentence, yep. and he's still alive. Yeah, he's so. in super yeah. max. And you know, so getting back to it, so you defended some of the families. No, I prosecuted for them in a civil case. Yeah, and what was the? And I, they never went anywhere. I left, and and Judicial Watch screwed it up. Okay, most as they screwed up everything when I yeah. left. I went to run for the U.S. Senate. So I want to talk about that a little yeah. bit because Tom Fenton is. Uh, is on the air every night in his skimpy little shirts, and cute. And so you, I mean, and, and most people don't realize you actually started. You know, Judicial Watch is basically to extract. You know, the information the, the, the name, government Judicial Watch is isn't releasing us right. That's right. the well. That's no, the, that was not the uh, only reason. No, I now mean, it is. Well, Fitton turned it into almost exclusively Freedom of Information Act because he's not a lawyer. But I, my concept was to create. An entity initially. Where was this to, located? In Washington, in on Washington, the tour. Yeah, Where? yeah. It it was located at five hundred one School Street. That was my office. I let my office uh, be used for Judicial Watch initially. I funded Judicial Watch with about six hundred thousand dollars of my own money. I had a big settlement because I took time away from my private practice to develop it. People used to say, "Why do you do it?" I said, "I didn't. I hurt my back. I didn't play golf. <laughs> now I play golf a little bit. My my back and, is and, better." And you don't have the six hundred, right? I don't have the oh, six hundred, yeah. but it was to watch judges, watching judges, judicial watch. And then I realized that I could have the judges watch the other two branches of government by bringing lawsuits. Now I'm a lawyer. I'm a trial lawyer, former Justice Department prosecutor, defense lawyer, etc. So that was my modus operandi: is to be a private Justice Department. I turned mm. it into that. For the people, who, Judicial um, Watch is no longer a private justice department. It, it's a, it, it's they changed the mission to transparency in government because uh, because Spinton's not a lawyer. Yeah, and they hire these young lawyers that have never really tried a case in their entire life. And look, I'm not knocking getting good documents. That's good, right? Okay, but what do you do with the documents once you get them? So it's not enough to go in Hannity and say, "Oh, the government should be doing X, Y, Z." The government doesn't do anything. We see that everybody skates. So but, uh, we, we have to do the best we can as citizens to bring about justice. I want to give a great. I want to give well, a well, no. Just, no, well, because you, you've, you've done such a commendable job, and I'm gonna. If I can switch roles for a moment from eulogist and ombudsman, I'm gonna be the investor. Who do I make this check out to? <laughs> it's tax deductible. <laughs> right? No, 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 no. This is for this horror tour because I really want to invest. In it's this. it's double decker. Okay. It's, it's made out to Freedom you know, Watch. Why don't I just well, give you, you know a what? blank check? <laughs> I recommend that you get on top. 
and uh, <laughs> and uh, I want you know I want no, the upper deck. I, I didn't mean it. The I want to give right. a bit of a shout out because it's something we were talking about too. Um, and you're gonna have to correct me on her name if I'm incorrect. One of the great writers in American greatness, Julie Kelly. Yes, and Julia it, Kelly. Julia Kelly, and she wrote a great piece, and it's what could we, be Julie. And, I don't and, know. and it's what we speak about uh, constantly about just turning off Hannity. And it was her whole point in the piece was if she has to listen to if mm-hmm. if, if she said if Maria Bartiromo, uh, the money honey, who's a, who's actually an amazing host and interviewer. And Hannity have Lindsey Graham on one more time without him actually prosecuting well, he somebody. Has the same people all the time. Just it's the same show every night. Well, it is the same show. But it gets. It, it but goes, this is the, we have to analyze that. Yeah. Why does he have the highest ratings? Why are people tuning that in to watch? Because that because no, but, but let's Why? focus on our tour. Oh, on our tour. tour. We're getting back to our tour. You're right because they're all whores. You're right. They're all there. Hannity's it, a whore. He's a slumlord but, in but, Atlanta. But he's a hard. He is a hard working. Uh, he is hard working. He is, he is hard working. Yeah. Let's get back to the tour though. So we're back on the tour. You've you 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 open Judicial Watch. You know you create Judicial Watch and to 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 fight against rogue judges. Well, I, I had I'd reached a What's point. Your you first remember, case? You remember What's your that? First case? Let me just back yeah. up a little bit. You remember that movie How uh, Network How where the guy sticks his neck out his face yeah, out? Yeah, of course. Says, I Howard Beale. Yeah. I, I can't take Albert it. Albert Finney. I can't take it anymore. No, it's not no. Albert Finney. Albert Finney. Yeah, I can't Peter take Finch. Peter Finch. Or whatever. Thank you. Albert Finney. He says I can't take it anymore, and he's screaming. Yeah, I'm mad as hell. I, I, I'm an ideologue. I mean, I I had had experiences representing people who didn't play with the same deck of cards. I mean, <laughs> U.S. importers. Foreign exporters. I saw how politics and money influenced decision making. It, it it offended me. Who was the first case on your tour? Who was the first case for Judicial Watch? Who was the first okay, person? The first case I conceived of this. I was coming back from Los Angeles. I've always spent a lot of time out here. Never and I, been. And I, and I was on the plane. <laughs> well, you're dead at this point. Of uh, well, you were, that was a previous episode. Yeah, this is okay. my soul speaking, right? Right. Now. I was coming back on a plane. This I is my up, purgatory. I opened up Business Week. And it says Clinton cozies up to business. Yeah. Right? This was actually the second case. I'll tell you the first one later. Please. And a guy named Bernard Schwartz, who who was the CEO of L'Oreal Corporation, high-tech company. L'Oreal. Na- L'Oreal. Yeah. No, no, no. L'Oreal. You had L'Oreal. it right the first time. L'Oreal, L'Oreal is a cosmetics company. Right, in and France. The, and and uh, for which the late executive Ron was Paul, a— man. No, huh. was a um, classmate of George H.W. Bush's at Andover. That's a different story. That, go, yeah, on. go on. Yeah, so— I read this that people are going on trade missions and the government's helping them get business if they donate $100,000 to the Clinton campaign. And I said, gee, you know, I'm an international law firm. I'd like to go on these trips, but I don't have $100,000 to donate. And as a former antitrust lawyer, I said, this is anti-competitive. Right. So I filed a Freedom of Information Act with the Commerce Department. One thing led to the next. I uncovered that Clinton was selling seats on trade missions. It was Hillary's idea. Um, he had, you know, and I, and I, it was, it became the biggest scandal of our time. I mean, it's bigger than Monica Lewinsky. Bob Woodward got into it. Bill Sapphire, everybody, and uh, did it become addictive? Honestly, did these lawsuits start to become? It became addictive. Uh, did you ever see that movie um, <laughs> from Rome with Love? By Woody Allen? Uh, yes. I, I know I love Woody yeah, Allen, right? No, I had no idea. Where this mundane individual, this Italian in Rome, goes on a TV show, and they ask him what he eats for breakfast, and he becomes very well-known, and he gets so enamored with himself that he can't adapt to the fact that finally they don't have him on the show anymore. Right? When do you sue yourself? Okay, right, that, now, here's the that's point. That's the final episode. When, when these oh. things happen to you, and you hit the mother load, uh, at such an early time. At such an early time. This was the mother load, the biggest scandal people thought maybe in American history. You are on TV all the time, four and five times, maybe even in a night. Okay, You were like the you, Avenatti. You, it, it goes to your head. Okay, And you think, gee, aren't, aren't I important? But you know, it wears off very quickly. Because I always did this for a result. I didn't do it for the publicity. And it's, it's why today, frankly, I don't care that much. Okay, I mean, I, I've done my thing. Uh, I want results, and that's why, you know, I do comparative advertising with Judicial Watch because they've got 105 million dollars in the bank right now, 105 million, and they move, use most of it to get documents. Now, if, take that money and do something with the documents, okay? Okay. And you know, I built the brand. I built 
the name. It's it's it, listen. So yeah. I'm I'm not being jealous. It's hard. So what I'm saying is, you know, we need to do something in this country other than getting documents, and that's what I'm trying to do. We're the mouse that roared at, at Freedom Watch, and we've we've had a lot of successes. But not enough because the country continues to go into a, a downward death spiral. In all seriousness, you know, we Lewis and I joke. We do think the work you do is heroic and patriotic, and it, yeah. it, it, you, you you do yeoman's work for the country. On that note, I know I we're want, getting off the horse. I want five funny suits that you've done for this tour because. What did you ask for? You know, George Stephanopoulos is what was it? There the, was a Starbucks where everybody gets. Everybody dies. Everybody dies at They're the Starbucks. They're executed. Right. Interns. Interns. Right. All right. the interns got. Janet but, Reno's girlfriends in, in denim dresses. We have, but James Carville, I know you, 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 you sued him or you did something with James Carville. Yeah, I sued him for, uh, I, well, first of all, I deposed him, and he's the one that let it slip that Clinton and he had concocted a scheme to get the Privacy Act protected files in the White House of a woman that Clinton had sexually harassed Kathleen Willey. How come? How come you're waiting to this part of the bus tour to get to this story? Okay, now, Kathleen Willey. After the investors, Kathleen Willey's had husband had just sadly parking. died. Had just sadly died, and Clinton came on to her physically in the Oval Office. I call it the Oral Office in, yes. in terms of Clinton. Thanks, Jackie. Yeah. So, and anyway, uh, that was where Judge Royce Lamberth made a finding because I wanted to get certain documents that Clinton couldn't withhold the documents because he had committed. A crime fraud exception. He had, in fact, violated the Privacy Act, the criminal section of it, and that's the only finding in American history that a president has committed a crime. Okay, in a court of law. Right. Okay, so we did that. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm continually frustrated. Okay, forget about your frustrations. Okay. We're all frustrated. Can I get on the couch? I want more. I want you. You go after Carville. That's actually a great right. story. Now, Carville, you, you, you go after Carville. You said Carville was involved in that. I deposed him twice. Who else? Uh, on the Washington bus tour, have you deposed? Who have you well, deposed? Well, Steph, little Steffi Stephanopoulos. Yeah, we, we got it. We have. He's on. Our, we, we have. We, we have yeah. Harold Ickes. Harold Ickes. Isn't he dead? No. 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 Harold, Harold Ickes is alive. This is junior. Fact, huh? I have several cases against his ex-wife, Laura Hanman, and. Uh, Good on you. She works for Davis Wright Tremaine. They defend all these major media companies in defamation suits. But Harold was deputy White House counsel. Right. Uh, Harold, you know, I, I deposed him because I wanted to know what was going on in the White House with Filegate and Chinagate. And he was in my office. And Harold has connections to people who are mafia. He was the lawyer for the Restaurant Workers Union in New York. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's uh, basically mafia, you know. So... I uh, begin the deposition by saying, what's your name? And, and Harold's bobbing and weaving like some mar mafia character. I forgot. I forgot my name. Mm -hmm. Where were you born? I don't remember. You know, it was kind of like Stone and Frank Pantangele, right? You know, lose your memory, you know, and Stone's recent conviction that helped get him convicted when he told Randy Credico to do it, Frank Pantangele. Okay, yes, okay, yes. So stream any, of consciousness, Larry. So any, any event, stream of consciousness is, is that I get to a point uh, where... I'm tying Icky's into these mafia characters. And I'm, but we and we don't I, know his name. We don't even know his name. Howard Icky's or the mafia <laughs> characters? No, Icky's. We don't know his name. He didn't give you his name. Okay, well, I knew his name. Okay. Okay, okay so we'll call so him Icky's. I, so I said, Mr. Icky's, there's about 80 people that died in and around the administration. Yeah. You ever ask for any favors? <laughs> right? <laughs> he takes his, his um, lapel mic off and he slams it on the table. And he gets up, and I say, where are you going, Mr. Ickes? And I had the videographer, you know, follow him. And he says to him, in a southern accent, you know, obviously he's from the Bronx, he says, he says, Mr. Clayman, if I don't leave now and go to the restroom, I'm going to leave something on your floor, right? And that's taped. It winds up on Geraldo. And winds up scene. Yes. Yeah. So uh, anyway, he had to come back for a deposition. So, okay, so you depose him. Okay, and we're yeah. running out of time in this one, and, right. and we're running out of time on... on Getting uh, there's more. We'll to, do many more horse to, episodes. People to invest in this. There's no limit but, to the horse. But, but you see, running you, but, out. Every, we don't have any. Every episode you're, you 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 uh, of these, you save the best for last. So I'm I'm gonna save the best for last. I want you to name the six women you have. One. Just, just make it one. Okay. No, no. That I represented that you represented that were uh, associated with Bill Clinton. Okay. There Quickly. Was Jennifer Flowers. Okay. Dolly Kyle Browning, now Dolly Browning, Juanita Broderick, Paula Jones, 
Kathleen Willey. You see, this is he's got, a, he's got one left. Yeah. I'm trying to remember the other one. Okay. Uh, Donna Rice? No. Well, Donna Rice was Gary, Gary Hart. Hart. Yeah, I know, but you never know with you. Yeah. I mean, you could have, uh, there could have been a later lawsuit. But you yeah. see, that this is where I would start to tour. I would actually have. I guess there were five. I would actually have their. Pay, would, you know, that's what we got to do for this. It's more of like a visual aid for the, for, you know, when we're pitching this, we got to have the women. <laughs> There were the pictures of Linda Tripp and and uh, Kathleen Willey and all these different people. James Carville, Janet Reno. With we need and, Larry Dwayne in the car. <laughs> <laughs> well, check the undercarriage. Okay? Yeah, right. And 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 uh, you know, I I I got to say, all joking aside, you're you 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 do yeoman's work. It's uh, I got to be honest with you. I didn't know why you started Judicial Watch and. Um, I can tell you that story in the next episode. You could tell. Well, I think you already told us in this yes. episode. No, there's, there's a re, there was a there was a, a, a flashpoint why I started. Okay, and we will. And why you took the the six hundred grand you had won in a lawsuit and started Judicial yeah. Watch. But I I do think it's um. I really do think it's 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 good work because I think there are a lot of people out there like a lot of your clients like Clive and Bundy who have seriously gotten screwed by the United States government yeah. that can't afford lawyers. You know, as they're losing their land. And um, Lewis, wherever you are tonight, uh, you're, you're the hologram of you, I pray. I, I pray for your, your your soul. May it be at peace in Uganda. Yes, he's, he's doing a new movie, Paran- uh, Paranormal uh, Ten. Paranormal Ten, and yeah, no, that's you, Larry. You're projecting. Right. You're gonna. You're. <laughs> you are uh, uh, Paranormal Ten, and um, I'm Abnormal Ten. People, Don't. people. You see, when you open the door, he always takes it, it, it to the next. It's it's the most fascinating thing. Lock it. Yeah, lock put it. a chair yeah, in yeah, front of yeah. it. Yeah. Good call, Lewis. You're right. I mean, you're you're completely right, Larry. You're great, L K. For everyone, for, for everyone, that's L K. The number four, every the number one. Uh, Amer- amgreatness.com, freedomwatch. You freedomwatchusa.org. Lewis Fine somewhere in the world. And uh, I, of course, He's am. Fine. I, of course, am. Hey, Ben Hur, Judah Friedman, and uh, thank you everybody for listening, and uh, have a great whatever time of whatever you're listening to.